Rick Leinecker here, and in this presentation, we're going to be styling. So I'm going to start with the last pair of files I used in Chapter 1. And by the way, this presentation goes with the start of Chapter 2 in your book. First thing I'm going to do is take styles.css and edit that. And to H1, I'm going to go ahead and add a font family attribute change. Let's set it to comic sans ms. Okay. Now, as you probably expect, this is going to change the font family for all uses of H1. So let me save that. Go out here and render styles one, and it change the font from the default. Let's try it again so you know there are no tricks up my sleeve. Let's change it to something like Arial. Save that. Render. Actually, I can save myself a lot of trouble by leaving that open. We'll change it to Times New Roman. Save. Refresh. And it changes the font family. Okay? Now, here is the really big issue with font families, is that not everybody is guaranteed to have the font that you want to use, okay? Um, for instance, I might have some really cool fonts loaded on my system, and as I develop my web page, I think, wow, let me use this font. This would be awesome. And so I use it. It looks great on my system, but someone down the road doesn't have that font installed on their system, and it doesn't look the same. So the fonts are not necessarily carried with the page as only the, the reference to the font family. As you can see, I've just told it what font to use. I haven't given it a font or given it font data. Now, there have been attempts to, uh, to do this, to, to put actual font, embedded fonts, but uh, I'm going to recommend for right now you stay away from that. And we are going to go under the assumption that um, you have to somehow match the fonts on, on user systems. Here again, there are ways around that, but let's go ahead and ignore that for right now because that's very advanced and not necessarily 100% uh, guaranteed. Okay, so there's another way you can, everybody obviously has Times New Roman, but there are some fonts that are known as generic fonts that every system will have. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and... I'm going to get a little bit ahead of myself and use the span tag to add these styles in. But I want you to know that we are not going to really talk about the span tag till later on. And I'm going to go ahead and for right now um, break the rule. Not a rule, but break my suggestion of putting everything into um, an external style sheet. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, for just for educational purposes, I'm going to go ahead and embed everything. So make sure I say font family for this, and I can put that semicolon there just. To form, and we're going to do a copy and paste, which you guys hopefully are good at by now, and what we're going to do is just go ahead and edit these, and this will be sans serif, this will be cursive, this will be fantasy, and this will be monospace, and monospace you almost never use, but I end up using it just because uh, I might list some source code online or something like that, and in that case, it's really useful. So let me just do a little copy and paste to expedite this process. Cursive. And sans, sans serif. Okay, save this guy out. Minimize that, r run him so we can render it. And you can see all of the uh, styles there are different. Okay. Now, just because these 
are generic font names and every system is guaranteed to have them doesn't mean every system will look the same. As a matter of fact, uh, they don't all necessarily look the same on different systems. Now, since this is such small text, let's go ahead and use this opportunity to go ahead and talk about changing the text style. Excuse me, the text size. Get rid of that. Go back to my uh, embedded styles, and I'm going to say, go ahead and specify a font size, font dash size, and we'll make this say 16 points. Okay. Let me go ahead and paste that into all these so that they're all 16 point font. Save that. Render styles. Stop. Okay, and you can see they're a lot bigger now. Now that's in point sizes, which you may or may not want to use. You can also use pixel sizes. PT is point, pixel is PX. Pixel is going to be dependent more on the system than on the actual font. Okay, so you can see there's a slight difference there, but not much. There are also named font sizes. XX small, X small, small, medium, large, X large, XX large. So if I want, I can use those because um, there are these predefined sizes. For instance, here I can say X dash large. I can say X dash small here. I can say medium here. And the only advantage to really using the, the name sizes is it's easy to see kind of easier to understand okay um, so you can do that if you want I almost never do I usually use pixel size or point size or something like that